Ladies and gentlemen, family and friends, scholars and dignitaries, welcome to another episode. Welcome to my world. Hello, friends. So if you haven't heard about it, there has been a wave of hostile and destructive desecration and vandalism against churches, not just in America, but throughout the world. There has even been a rash of church burnings, not just here, but in Canada and across Europe as well. I've spoken before about Christophobia and how the left is targeting churches literally to disempower them and even to shut them down. And much of this has to do with the church's stance against immorality, for sure. In a sense, this is in direct opposition to modernism and the new political and cultural ideologies. But as well as that, there are myths and fallacies about the church that have been perpetrated by activists and others that clearly are not true, yet serve to inflame and provoke and aggravate people, and sometimes those people take matters into their own hands. As I've said before, Christianity is the last accepted form of prejudice and discrimination. Anyway, we have another very real example of how a myth led to a lot of unnecessary trouble, not just for the Catholic Church, but also for the Anglican Church, Presbyterian Church, and even several Baptists and even some non-denominational churches. In yet another example of fake news and media hysteria, it was reported by media outlets around the world that Catholic-operated schools for Indigenous children in Canada had years ago dumped hundreds of dead children into unmarked graves. In other words, these schools were insensitive, brutal, and savage and treated children like animals. And then, some weeks later, the media then claimed that some, quote, 751 unmarked graves have been found behind one single residential school. And then the frenzy started. Canada's president, Justin Trudeau, without any investigation or waiting for a report, ordered the country's flags to be lowered to half-mast and initiating a, quote, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation as an acknowledgement of the church's guilt. Of course, media outlets, which tend overall to be liberal and anti-Christian and definitely anti-Catholic, blasted the news with great fanfare and with many condemning and bludgeoning the church. The media did such a good job of spreading this false information that people became enraged, even to the point of torching and vandalizing dozens of Catholic churches across Canada. Of course, the media thought this was justified and so remained suspiciously silent on this atrocity. And then the facts surfaced. No one had seen a single body from any of these so-called unmarked mass graves. The ground-penetrating radar that was supposedly used gave false information, or rather the data was misinterpreted. And then, some months later, scholars and journalists began to actually take note of some of the important facts. Not a single body had ever been exhumed from the so-called unmarked graves, not one, and neither was there any evidence of any unmarked graves to begin with. So the media printed story after story that claimed that the use of so-called ground-penetrating radar had detected abnormalities in the soil below, and based only on these so-called abnormalities in the ground, someone somehow claimed that mass graves existed, and the media bought it, hook, line, and sinker, and thus the myth was born. Meanwhile, whatever aberrations there were in the soil could have been anything, but sadly, it was just enough quote-unquote evidence for the media to launch yet another campaign of hate against the church and one wherein the politicians gleefully joined in. Detailed research has now well documented that there is no evidence that deaths of any indigenous children at these schools was ever covered up, that there were any corpses thrown into mass unmarked graves which were kept secret, or where there may have been a death that parents of the children were never informed, as both the tribal groups repeatedly charged and the media agreeably reported and repeated time and again. According to one author, this should be the scandal, that a story that was not based on any fact or evidence was promoted, as it was for more than a week, and which provoked arson attacks that destroyed dozens of churches in Canada, and yes, it turned out to be based on such flimsy, unexamined evidence, and yes, a lie. 
Perhaps the worst part, though, is that the media will never admit its role in this campaign of vengeance, of discrimination, and as unfortunately, they never fully corrected the story. Oh, and one more thing. To this day, the media still refuses to accept the great and positive role that the churches did have in helping all people to grow and develop in a healthy community. The media seems to have abandoned any regard for the truth, no matter the consequences to us all. Hey, be safe, be well, and may God bless.